Be sure to stay with us at halftime for the Domino Pizza NFL Live Halftime Report. They'll be talking with Don Shula. Of course, he has been to the playoffs so many times. Bill Cowher, remember we had him for the first four games of the year. What a great job he is. What a motivator. I'm very impressed with this young man. Justifiably, coach of the year at 11 and 5. In fact, there are three rookie coaches that you could have considered for that honor, but certainly Bill Cowher is one, and he's the guy right now that he's going to be on the edge of the seat watching what Warren Moon Hughes is doing in anticipation that, you know, at least at this point, the way it looks, that if the Oilers would be heading down to Pittsburgh. Buffalo now from their own 20-yard line first down to give it to Kenneth Davis. And so the Bills satisfied now just to run out the clock at the end of the first half and go into the locker room and try to regroup. You can paint the first half Columbia Blue for the Houston Oilers as they lead 28-3 over the Buffalo Bills. Time of possession, more than 21 minutes in the first half. Now, let's go to Bob Costas in New York, huh? This is the Domino's Pizza NFL Live Halftime Report. Brought to you by Domino's Pizza, where you always get great pizza, plus something for nothing. Okay, Will McDonough's here. OJ's in Buffalo. We'll hear from him before the halftime period is over with. And Boomer Esiason is our special guest in the studio this weekend. Let's reinforce what Charlie Jones was saying just before he threw it to us. Take a look at this. This is the time of possession, a better than 2-1 to one advantage for Houston. But most importantly, every time they touch the ball, they scored a touchdown. Now, Boomer, you were telling us on the uh, pregame show about... Frank Reich's ability to lead comebacks at Maryland. He had that one where he was down 31 nothing against Miami. Greatest comeback in Division I history. This is it, like uh, climbing Mount Everest as far as I'm concerned. Warren Moon is absolutely putting on a clinic. And I can tell you that uh, he is benefiting from four first-round draft picks that are sitting on that offensive line along with a second-round draft pick. It is like seven-on-seven seven in practice for him right now. He is in such a zone. It's like Michael Jordan shooting three-pointers. What does it feel like? to be in that kind of zone. I mean, this is the type of game you do not want to come out of. And I know that he has had some injury problems uh, in, in, in his history, mm -hmm. especially against us a couple years ago, where why is he, why will he still be in the game? But this is a game where it doesn't come along very often. He wants to stay in there and he wants to keep throwing. Willie? Well, Bob, in the record book, the most efficient playoff game in history of the NFL was Phil Simms against Denver in the Super Bowl. 22 for 25, 268, three TDs, but his percentage of completions, 88. Warren Moon's probably just played the best half of uh, in playoff history for a quarterback. 19 for 22, 219, four touchdowns, uh, better than Phil, and at 86%. <laughs> now, the record for touchdown passes in an NFL game is seven, but in a playoff game, the record is six by the mad bomber, Darrell LaMonica, for the Oakland Raiders against Houston in 1969. So Warren would have a crack at that, depending upon how long Jack Pardee leaves it in the game. The two cities that'll be hosting AFC Divisional Playoffs next weekend are, of course, Pittsburgh and Miami. We're joined live now from those two locales by Steelers coach Bill Cower and the Dolphins' Don Shula. I don't know if Cower is cowering after watching this uh, first half played <laughs> by the Oilers, but you've got to be aware of it, Bill. Well, Bob, they were very impressive, and they certainly have disproved the theory of bad weather being uh, uh, ineffective for the run and shoot. Now, you beat them twice this year, but they were both close games. Uh, week one in Houston, you came from behind to do it. Then you beat them 21-20 at midseason in your place. And the theory goes that it's very, very tough to beat a good team three times in one season. Well, that's true, Bob. But uh, we feel good about the fact that uh, we feel we match up pretty good with Houston. And it's going to be a battle. It's going to come down to the last couple of minutes, we feel. And uh, hopefully we can make uh, the chance of with all those opportunities that usually present themselves in these type of games. What's Neil O'Donnell's status right now with the fractured fibula? Well, Neil practiced for the last three days. We uh, practiced Thursday, Friday, and concluded Saturday. And uh, we split time with him and Bobby. And we're going to see how he responded with those three days of work. We were put him through a pretty good workout. And uh, we'll make a decision on Tuesday as we start our preparation for the Saturday game. But you have said, haven't you, that if O'Donnell is physically able, he's going to be your choice. That's true, Bob, and we will do that. And like I said, we put him through a pretty thorough workout through Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And, and based on any setback, uh, we'll be anticipating making that decision and that choice on Tuesday as we prepare our, uh, our opening preparations for the game on Saturday. Bill, thanks. Let's turn to Don Shula. Bill is watching his likely opponent uh, for next week, almost certainly in the Oilers. You saw your opponent yesterday, uh, the San Diego Chargers, as they came on in the second half to beat the Chiefs. You didn't play them 
this year, Don, but toward the end of last year, they dealt you a very costly defeat in San Diego when Rod Bernstein went crazy in the fourth quarter with three touchdowns, so you know what that team is capable of. Right, they knocked us out of the playoffs. We had a two-touchdown lead, and then they came back and scored uh, in the fourth quarter and helped knock us out of the playoffs. The Jets knocked us out the next week, but we felt uh, last year that the Chargers were a real good football team, and of course this year they start out 0-4, and four, and then they got hot, and uh, they're playing as well as anybody in the National Football League right now. What about that defense with O'Neal and Seau and the others, led by your old compatriot, Bill Arnsparger, who was with you through so many great days with the Dolphins? I'm happy for Bill that he's back in it because, uh, uh, you know, I never thought that Bill wanted to get out of coaching. Uh, he did a great job for us, and then he made the decision to go back. And, of course, Bobby Beathard knew Bill and knew his uh, ability from uh, being around Bill when, when Bobby was here. So it seemed, seemed to be a natural fit for Bobby to bring uh, Arnst back into it. Now, this is so important, talking about John Offerdahl and that strained abdominal muscle, which caused him to miss pretty much half of a season. He's important against anybody, but I would think especially so a team like the Chargers with those big running backs. He's your run-stuffing guy. Yeah, but I don't think that John is going to be able to make it. Uh, uh, we keep looking for some improvement, and, and we can't find any. And we're going to wait till maybe uh, two or three days go by in this week. And if he can't get back into the practices, then it looks like John's not going to be available to us at all. And everything's going to fall on Dwight Hollier's shoulders. And this rookie from North Carolina has done a good job filling in. How about another linebacker who's been hurt, Marco Coleman? What's his status? Marco is uh, now playing defensive line all the way, and uh, he said that he's going to be ready to play in the ball game. He told me that last week, leaving the field after being injured in New England. And uh, Marco is going to start practicing tomorrow with us, and uh, we feel he'll be ready. Don, thanks very much. Bill Cowher, a thanks to you as well. And coming thanks, up, we'll get a report from OJ at Rich Stadium. That's after a message from the NFL and a word from your local station. special thank you to the National Football League, its teams, players, and owners, and to all of you who volunteer and contribute. Thanks to you, United Way will be there to help people all year long. Because of you, your local United Way is helping where help is needed most. presents Double Crunch Weekend. Jean-Claude Van Damme takes on Martin Short. I'm going to break your neck. Break your neck! When two world television premiere movies square off. First, Jean-Claude Van Damme does what he does best in Lionheart NBC Tonight. Then, on Monday, Martin mm -hmm. Short teams with Danny Glover. I thought it was the stupidest idea I've ever heard of. In Pure Luck, Lionheart Tonight, Pure Luck Monday, NBC Double Crunch Weekend. Only one minivan's ever been named an Automobile Magazine All-Star five years in a row. Dodge Caravan. And Caravan's a 93 Motor Trend Best Buy. So, we're throwing an award celebration sale. Now you can save over $2,100 on this grand caravan because we've priced it the same as a regular caravan. That's 25 extra cubic feet of space at no extra charge. So come celebrate with us. Drive a caravan at your nearest Dodge dealer today. Best way to do business? Service. Be there whenever and wherever you're needed. Integrity. Always stand up for what you believe in. The best way? Be well equipped. Like Canon copiers from Best Business Products. Fast, reliable quality. You can count on Canon and Best Business Products for service and integrity. Know your limitations. Ask for help from the experts. Best Business Products. The best way to do business. You're in clearance on now at Unclaimed Freight. This 
is the Domino's Pizza NFL Live Halftime Report. Brought to you by Domino's Pizza, where you always get great pizza, plus something for nothing. Well, let's find out if O.J. Simpson has a different way of expressing the obvious. We've all had our crack at it. Houston is kicking Buffalo's booty. O.J.? <laughs> You got Thank that right, Bob, and despite the great game, more and moon, and the receivers are having for Houston, if you're going to give out a game ball right now, you would have to give it to the Houston Oilers offensive line. They're doing a heck of a job. I was talking to the Bills defensive players, saying, well, what's going on out there? They said, well, we can't get the moon. The guy is throwing strikes. He's taking a three-step drop, and if we blitz him, he's going deep. I said, well, what can you do in the second half? They all looked at me with blank stares, and they hunched their shoulders. We don't know. Another point of bad news for the Bills is we're getting a little freezing rain right here. So if the Bills are going to do something in the second half, they don't seem to know. I don't know, Bob. You tell me. OJ, did you get a sense as you were around them this week that I'm not saying they're not putting out, not by any means, but that they were resigned to their fate having blown the division championship and then Kelly out and the other injuries that they were sort of expecting this? No, I, I really don't. I think offensively they thought with Wright that they would be in good shape. They didn't think they really lost that much offensively. Unfortunately, for the first hour of this football game, their offensive unit was trying to stay warm for 50 of those minutes here on the sideline. Their concern was the fact that uh, Cardenas Bennett wasn't going to play and if they can get some pressure on Moon. As you can see, they're not getting any pressure on Moon. And the question here is, and I can't say any team will ever quit in a football game, but I saw a totally disheartened team going up that tunnel and they didn't seem to know what to do about it. All right, OJ, thanks a lot. A reminder, we'll be here after the game with a full post-game show. It will include Gail Gardner's look back to the 1981 San Diego Chargers, and that includes a look at that tremendous playoff game against the Dolphins. There you see Kellen Winslow in that uh, picture right there being helped off after his heroic effort in that overtime game. We'll also visit again with the Steelers coach, Bill Cower. He'll play Houston next Saturday, barring a Buffalo miracle in the second half coming up, and we'll have post-game interviews from Rich Stadium as well. Before we get to the post-game, however, we have the second half of the Oilers and Bills, and that would appear to be obvious. We'll send it back to Charlie Jones and Todd Christensen after these messages from your local station. NBC and all new eyewitness video. Eyewitness a powerboat out of control. Meet the lucky survivor. There are hotel employees caught stealing from a guest. And experts were baffled by these mysterious circles. For the first time ever, the mystery is solved. Then a copter flies dangerously close to a terrifying twister. Those videos and more on all new eyewitness video NBC tonight. It's America's newest thrill. Swimming with hundreds of man-eating sharks. Now John Scott takes you undersea to experience the ultimate terror firsthand. Dateline Tuesday. When the automotive press hands out its awards, we want to be on the list. And Dodge has been on a lot of them. So, we're hosting an award celebration sale. This Dodge Dakota, with its available Magnum engine, is deemed more powerful than almost every compact pickup you can find. And now, during our sale, you can save over $3,200 on a Dakota with an automatic. So come celebrate with us. Drive a Dakota LE at your nearest Dodge dealer today. KDLT News. We know what matters. Here at halftime, the Houston Oilers leading the Buffalo Bills by a score of 28 to 3. I'm Charlie Jones along with Todd Christensen. When we talked with Ernest Gibbons yesterday afternoon, he said our, he said we are peaking at the exact right time, and they, they certainly are. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the team we're seeing uh, last week and this week, we're seeing the team that the Houston Oilers fans felt that was there. Well, I know, and I, I want to resist the temptation to say this, but Moon is eclipsing the Bills. I mean, this is just absolutely unbelievable what this man is doing in the first half. Four touchdown passes in the first half. Take a look at the statistics that have been generated by the Houston Oilers. First downs, nearly three to one. Even the rushing yards, 64 yards for Lorenzo White, 215 passing, 284 total yards, and of course, that time of possession huge in favor of the Houston Oilers. The Keystone halftime statistics, Warren Moon staying loose on the sideline. The Buffalo Bills will have the first opportunity in offense to start the second half.